Hey everybody, all right, so this is just a quick overview of the fuser. Uh, this is a 2.75 inch Conflat uh, fuser, and uh, most of these parts I bought off of eBay, and um, I think I started probably about two and a half, three months ago. Uh, so let me just give you a quick walkthrough of what I've got here. Okay, so there is the uh, the chamber. The chamber is actually directly underneath the boxer fan for cooling. And um, the front of the chamber, which is, contains a viewport, is uh, uh, shielded with this lead. And you can kind of see the viewport down in there. And the uh, vacuum line is a bellows hose that goes down to a diffusion pump. And the diffusion pump is uh, powered by the um, roughing pump, the Robin Air, uh, I'm sorry, Richie Yellow Jacket. And uh, here is the uh, cooling water. And I got a buck of ice over here from my recent run. And the temperature has to be usually between something like 68 and 86 degrees maximum, but I keep it at about 70. And uh, I'll get here in the power supply in a second. So metering, I've got an analog kilovolt meter, and I use a standard um, milliamp meter for uh, finding out what my milliamp ratings are coming up or as I'm uh, powering this thing up. I've got the uh, thermocouple gauge going into the chamber. And here is the high voltage feed through that uh, supports the uh, fusion grid on the inside. And um, let's see, on the back, there's my uh, high voltage line going down to the power supply. There's the star grounding system that's highly recommended. And I will uh, second that, that is an outstanding setup uh, for safety purposes. And um, let's see, for neutron detection, this is my wax moderator. It's basically a, about a six inch PVC cylinder filled up to the top with uh, wax. And I have a CHM14 uh, Corona tube. I was having a couple issues with the, with the Corona tube, as some of you guys might recall, um, but after going through the forums over the past almost 10 hours since uh, my last post, I found a whole bunch of information on proper biasing and setting uh, threshold levels. So in order to get this thing to couple up properly and register um, with the Ledlam 2221, uh, the bias voltage for just on the threshold of Corona had to be exactly 670 volts. Uh, if I went above that, the, the gain was just too high and it was causing a whole bunch of noise. Um, I tried to do a couple of fusion runs over the past few days. And even though I got the proper voltages and currents for the 2.75 inch fuser setup, uh, it, it, just, it was just so doggone noisy, it was basically useless information. So this morning I spent probably about three or four hours um, calibrating it with a polonium beryllium neutron source and an AMBE neutron source. And I got basically all the noise cut out. The other issue, which I, I have to point out, my old system used a, um, a cable that was uh, not of the proper high voltage rating. And the, uh, the connectors were a little bit loose. So I completely swapped this thing out with a nice brand new, good one piece cable and uh, that knocked out basically all the noise as well so uh, it's a really good stable system it averages uh, about you probably about one count per minute maybe less maybe sometimes um, one count every two to three minutes uh, neutron detection just normal background all right so let's see uh, coupled to the uh, new DV6, DV-6M vacuum thermal couple gauge, I've got the uh, Hastings um, meter here to give me vacuum. And uh, for this fusion run, 
40 millitor of deuterium uh, pressure at 21,000 volts at between 1.75 and 1.8 milliamps is uh, what gave me my very low yield but uh, detectable nonetheless. And um, what I use for my deuterium is uh, sourced from a pin cell. So excuse the mess, I'm gonna walk over here. And there's my x-ray monitoring for pancake. Um, so I use the pin cell and with the pin cell I charge up this uh, 100 milliliter syringe and back over here to the, uh, the plumbing. I basically just connect it right here to the end of the plumbing with the regular valve and then I adjust it with the fine-tuning metering valve here and um, you know, because my uh, diffusion pump is so thirsty and it's really overkill for the system, it just, just slurps up this gas something here. So I've got the, the pump practically 85 to 90 percent throttled off and it still uh, uses up this syringe in about 20 minutes. So um, I do need to work on that a little bit more so I can have some more longevity because it, it takes about an hour, hour and a half to fill up one of these syringes. Uh, for a charge. Um, let's see. All right. So here's something that's really good, and I think this is going to be good for amateur fusion. Uh, so I was reading in the fuser forums about six months ago. Finn Hammer um, and several others were talking about using the precipitator power supplies. So I bought the 30,000 volt 10 milliamp precipitator power supply. Uh, powered by 220 volts and um, I, I can't say enough good things about this. It puts out every bit of power that it says it puts out. I have had no issue with it getting into overcurrent mode and turning off. Um, it's got plenty of current. My fusion run that I just did now was under utilizing this $50 power supply. I have the larger um, 10, 12 milliamp, 60,000 volt supply on the way. So I will be testing that out in the next uh, couple of weeks and uh, see what I can get from that. So let's see, what else do I have to say about the system? That, I think, is about it. So um, I'm letting it cool off, as you can hear. And... Uh, you got any questions feel free to ask and uh, any consideration that you might give or questions or or anything uh, please throw them out there and uh, thanks for watching